I'm Maria Speak. I helped start Retruvius Design a long time ago with my now husband, Adam Hills. We started salvaging materials in the process to help do up our first home. It was the early 90s and skips were still out on the street and I mean it was staggering. Fireplaces, doors, incredible ironmongery. It triggered a kind of shock and appalling sense of waste. So this enormous, beautifully lit space, in effect, was never used. There was a kitchen down at the back where the children's playroom now is. And the most exciting thing was knowing that you come in and this has to look kind of glamorous enough that you don't feel like you're coming into some back-end bit of kitchen. So the starting point was these two mahogany display cabinets that had come from one of the great British museum institutions. And I'm not allowed to name. <laughs> we removed the panel and put in the glass and the, I mean, everything's made so beautifully that, I mean, literally just needed a little bit of light sanding to bring it up. And that all of the insides from the cabinet is what has made these elements around here. We knew we wanted something twinkly above and that Adam had rescued these pieces of mirror from Unilever building down on the embankment and we made them into some very simple kitchen cabinet doors. I've gone back a lot to very nice simple old pendants because they're actually incredibly easy to change and on the whole are relatively inexpensive. Apart from the fact that we had these wonderful terrazzo column pieces, which had originally been rescued from Lewis's department store in Liverpool. I mean, they're kind of modern, they're ancient. One minute you're thinking about Athens and the Parthenon, and the next, I don't know, you're in some sort of deco art club or whatever. Rather than recycling or allowing materials to go through too many new processes, it is demystify ways in which materials can get reused. These amazing old folio pieces that had originally come from the British Library and they used to have all of their drawings inside them. And somehow, you know, that age, the texture, the knowledge of what's been in there, that's the fun of being able to design with salvage materials because you get a palette and a patina and a different movement that I would never have come up with. These are timorous beasties who are great old friends from, in fact, our Glasgow days. I very much like layering fabrics in the way that you would with a dress. I love the idea of giving a dandelion the sort of scale and grandeur and sort of regalness. It's so wonderful that it's just the weed that is being made magical. But then what was so marvellous was then finding this original sweet little Scandinavian cross stitch of the dandelion when you blow and you <sighs> these were originally the old wardrobes that were here and so we just redid the doors on them and helped break it up a bit and otherwise it was just reusing the doors and you know painting them and then putting a few little insets into them I'm unbelievably loyal to the wonderful Lewis and Wood. Um, and this is one of their designs. But I also like not using it constantly over the whole repeat of the curtain. I like breaking it up and picking up some of the colors in with a velvet as well as with the ground cloth. 
And this is an old pair of Art Deco doors. And what we decided to do, rather than reglaze, was mirror them on both sides so that at night, when you're sleeping, these shut to block out the light and also within the dressing room area act as a re relaxed, simple mirror. We have a very nice, simple bathroom, but then with these fragments of rescued fireplace pieces. We used to have this term where it was like materials were put in by stealth, so that no one would necessarily know that they were reclaimed, but I don't really mind how the materials get reused, I just want them to get reused. <laughs>